Hey there, Forge fans, Anthony Urcioli with you. It's the Forge Audio Network. This is the match day preview. We're, we're running, we're down to the wire here. Not a whole ton of match day previews remaining, especially in the regular season. The second to last regular season matchup for Forge FC at home. The first of two matches in five days as part of three matches in nine days. Busy week for Forge. They take on Pacific FC and Forge still have their eyes on top spot on the CPL table. Pacific, by the way, also within striking distance of top spot. Certainly, they're playing for seating as they are one of the four clubs along with Forge. We're, we're at a jockeying stage right now for position. Uh, you have Atletico in first, Forge in second. They're four points back with a match in hand. So, Forge will need four points in the remaining two matches. And they'll need Ottawa to lose their finale on the weekend against York so Forge fans are going to have to be I mean, depending how things play out Wednesday night at home against Pacific but you may have to cheer for York you may have to be York fans for one day um, against Ottawa but before we get to that Forge needing to take care of their own business uh, the other team in that top four Cavalry so um, and that's that's Pacific's last match. They're against Calvary. So you have these clubs playing each other all in contention. A lot of movement still possible in this final week of the regular season. Playoffs will start uh, mid-October. Now, this is how it'll play out for Forge FC. If they finish first or second, currently they're in second. If they finish in the top two, the two-leg semifinal will begin on the road um, the weekend of October 15th. And then Forge will play their home match the second leg of the semifinal on October 23rd. Okay, so that's the plan if Forge finishes in the top two. If they don't, if Forge finish third or fourth, they will open at home in the semifinal. That's on October 15th, and the return leg on the road will be on the 23rd. Reminder, no away goals in the aggregate in the Canadian Premier League this season. So um, away goals, do not they're not weighted differently than home goals. It is just whoever scores the most goals in two matches in the whole, in a home and away series. Uh, and if it is tied after regulation in that second leg, it'll just go straight to uh, sudden death. So um, this is it, right? We're down to it now. A couple matches remaining in the regular season. Forge very much still hoping to finish in that top spot. We are going to check in and give you the Pacific point of view. Uh, Cleve Dean Shaw, he's been on the program before. He's going to join us. He covers Pacific. He's a Hall of Fame sports writer out in BC, and he will join us shortly, and we'll get a little more, little more insight into Pacific and uh, you know what kind of team we're looking at because um, the team's look, gone through some changes this year with key guys in, out of the lineup, transfers, uh, injuries, suspensions, all kinds of movement, but I think this is the... Pacific is set on this squad uh, to finish the season and to go into the regular season with. So we'll check in with Cleve Dean Shaw to get a, a more of a perspective on Pacific. Before we do that, though, head coach and technical director Bobby Smirniotis speaking at the pre-match media conference on what he's expecting to see Wednesday night at Tim Hortons Field. 7 o'clock kickoff, by the way. Tickets available now. Um, there's some promotions. We're going to get into all that in a moment, though. But here is Bobby talking about that matchup with Pacific and uh, what he's expecting. Good performance all, on the weekend, especially in that second half. So we're uh, we're happy with that, and we just want to keep that uh, that going. You know, it's a part of the season that's uh, that's important um, with these uh, two games uh, in front of us. I'm trying to see as uh, as many points as we can get playing here at home. You know, I think tomorrow we'll. Uh, Everyone uh, knows that it'll be a tough match against the Pacific team who's been doing relatively well in the last few games. Um, but everyone's ready to go. Former Pacific forward, Taryn Campbell, also spoke ahead of this match. And uh, let's check in with him. He's facing his former team for the third time now this season. Don't forget, he was part of that Pacific team that won the championship last year at Tim Hortons Field when they beat Forge. Uh, Hojab Rapport scoring that game winner. I know most of you tried to block that out, but... Listen, they're, they're, they're with us now, so uh, we don't have to be worried about them scoring against us. But Campbell is sure looking to score against his former team, depending. Uh, we're not sure how the lineups are going to look. We never do until about an hour before kickoff on game day. Uh, but here's Taryn Campbell, who is facing his former team for a third time this season. It's definitely um, a playoff game. I think uh, um, Pacific is just below us uh, fighting uh, 
for second place. Um, so yeah, um, it'll be a playoff game tomorrow and um, it'll be good to see what they're like just before the postseason because we could end up playing them. We'll see what happens, but yeah. Now we should note as well, Kyle Becker is eligible to return in this match. He's uh, finished serving his three match suspension. So uh, Kyle Becker available for this contest against Pacific. Um, and then depending what happens Wednesday night, should be available for the finale as well against Halifax on Sunday. And Forge fans are just hoping that match means something and that Atletico loses on the weekend um, or even a draw could help Forge. They'll need more than the, they'll need uh, what, five points instead of the four. But um, either way, as long as Ottawa doesn't win on the weekend and Forge is able to kind of run the table um, through these final two matches. Let's check in now and get some Pacific insight. Cleve Deansaw, sports writer with the Victoria Times columnist for 28 years. He's covered Olympics. He's a Hall of Fame. Well, Cleve, we're, we're at it again. We, we didn't talk too, uh, too long ago the last time Pacific and Forge played, uh, but here we are. Final week of the season. Um, I believe, is it Pacific's final match on Wednesday night? Of the no, they, they close out against uh, yeah, another Cavalry in, in Cal- Calgary on Saturday. So what kind of, because I, I know, you know, Forge has their sight set on that top spot uh, in the table. Pacific, do you get the feeling that this is a club that's going to be battling for playoff positioning? Or is it a chance to get some guys some minutes? How do you think they're going to approach this week here? Uh, you know, I think it's it's a bit of both, but they still have hopes of a, you know, there's mathematically still alive if uh, right. Atletico Ottawa um, loses the final game and if they win out. Uh, that's a tall order because they're playing Forge and, and Cavalry to close out uh, uh, Victoria is. And so that's a tough ask for them. But uh, obviously, you're, you're shooting for the top, right? Uh, mathematically, they're still alive. And I think, um, you know, there's a, a bit of a gap between the semifinals. Uh, you got time to prepare. So I think they're going to go uh, hard both games. Uh, uh, and, and, and you know, uh, James Merriman said he's looking for uh, first place. And, you know, that's the way you have to approach it. Yeah, no, yeah, absolutely. So Pacific then, you know, it's been it's been an, a bit of an up and down season, I, I guess I would say. If Now there are still two games remaining, but, uh, you know, if the season were to end today, how would you kind of sum up Pacific's year? Uh, a, a season of waves. You know, they had right. that great start, you know, and people thought they were going to run away with the league. Then they had that uh, a, a, low, a low swing, and then they came back with a mid-season surge. Then another dip, and now closing off with uh, two, you know, uh, four undefeated and and two consecutive victories. Uh, mind you, they're against non-playoff teams, uh, but they did what they had to do. You know, you could only face the team in front of you, and they had to beat HFX, and and they did, and they and they then they had to beat FC Edmonton on the weekend at home in their final home game, and they did that, put themselves in you know in good position to where you know a result uh, uh, Sunday uh, would eliminate. Uh, um, valor and that's what happened so I mean they've done what they've needed to over the last four games in a bit of a spurt uh, to the end so it's been a uh, Anthony a season of ups and downs and a season of uh, streaks and waves for uh, for the Tridents and you get the feeling that the waves not just for Pacific but for all these top four clubs can, could continue when it gets to, co- to playoff time I mean obviously you want the seating you know first yeah. second would be would be nice but with the way the season's gone, with everyone just beating everyone, and be, just t- points have been so tough to come by, that home field is nice. But I mean, anything can happen. Yeah, I mean, it seems every two or three weeks the table had shifted this year, right? Until finally, right. it just you know, it sort of played out as people thought it might with the four teams that people expected to be in the postseason now officially in. But Valor gave it a good run right to the end, and uh, York and uh, HFX gave some pretty good. Uh, uh, pretty interesting pushes at the end, uh, you know, but obviously yeah. both fell short. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking at the playoffs, and, and this is an intriguing bunch. Everybody's got a great, and it's a great storylines all the way through. You got Forge looking to get back on top after, you know, being upset last year by uh, by uh, uh, PFC, you know, in the championship game that they still, uh, you know, want to get back, you know, because it's uh, uh, obviously a sore point with a group that would have loved to have one three straight, you know, just to start mm-hmm. as a as a really you know memorable start to uh, CPL history uh, that was denied them. So uh, you know that's the Forge storyline, the old champion trying to regain, and of course PFC, the holders, 
trying to keep on, uh, trying to keep their hold on the North Star Shield and not wanting to let go of it. And of course, uh, cavalry always biting around the edges, always knocking on the door, <clears throat> but never opening the door and going through. When it, you know, uh, at the end. But obviously, a team that's been the biggest contender of the non-champions over the last four years, always there. And of course, the the debutant, first time in the postseason for uh, the leaders of the league right now, uh, uh, Ottawa. And uh, and you know what a story they have been from you know not uh, making the playoffs last year uh, and uh, neither in the. Uh, yeah, in the bubble season as well, and uh, and now to top of the league possibly, and so all four of these teams have really fascinating storylines heading into the postseason. It's going to be a great playoffs. Yeah, has Pacific settled on a starting lineup? We're seeing a lot of mix. You know, Forge likes to do some rotations and get different guys in. Has Pacific hit a point now where it's like this is our this is, this is our eleven core guys here, and this is who we're going to take us to, to wherever? We yeah, I go. think he's uh, Merriman is pretty much set on who he wants to see through to the mix, and leading, of course, is the midfield uh, uh, duo of of, uh, of uh, Marco Bustos and uh, Manny Aparicio, and uh, they were front and center that the big victory over FC Edmonton on the weekend in the first minute, <clears throat> and. Um, the, you know the storyline for Manny Aparicio, four game suspension. Uh, controversial that first that three game to get to for what he got uh, for the foul that was, uh, and then a game added on just because of a, a technicality that uh, that nobody seemed to be aware of until the last minute. And, but since his return, what all he's done is uh, have two magnificent crosses that have led to goals. Uh, you know, and uh, it, it, against HFX in Halifax uh, after the storm. Uh, he a left-footed one from the left side to uh, charging Josh Hurd. That was the insurance goal uh, in that game, in that victory. And then, of course, in the first minute again uh, from the left side, uh, a, a, a nice cross in to uh, a charging Bustos who headed it in. So, I mean, his his return has been uh, very key for uh, what he does. He's the, he's a midfield engine. Many upper issue is, is for P, PFC and. And he used to be Marco Bustos, but now it's uh, Manny Aparicio. And how Manny Aparicio goes in the midfield, so goes PFC. Do, do you think, and has the team benefited from the CONCACAF experience this year? I, I know Forge talks a lot about their CONCACAF experience and what it's done for the club and, and as a group. With, I mean, the travel and just being in different in, environments. And it really helps kind of grow um, a group and kind of create that team element. Has Pacific benefited from their experience? I think now it has. Uh, when you look back on it, I think they're a, a, a hardened, better group for having gone through that experience. At the time, yeah. uh, you know, they had a really good run through Concacaf. Uh, you know, uh, you know, beating the uh, Jamaican champions in the first round, uh, and then uh, taking you know a, a pretty good uh, you know a, a squad from Costa Rica, one of the, you know one of the classic franchises in that league, uh, uh, with six players who are on the Ticos going to the you know to the to the World Cup uh, next month in Qatar, right. and taking them right to the limit to shoot out. So, uh, but after that, they had a real dip in season. You know, and I think. You know, they found it very tiring and very draining. Uh, but now when you look back mm -hmm. on it, you know, once that, that part is gone now, I mean, obviously, you know, they're, uh, you know, as far as being tired, has nothing to do with that anymore. You know, that was a couple of months ago. Uh, right. But right afterwards, I think it really affected their season. But now, uh, when you look back on the experience again from that, I think they'll be a better club for having gone through that, head, now heading into the playoffs. Because uh, essentially, when you, once you play in CONCACAF, you've been in playoff experience already. You know, been, you've been in elimination right. games already, and Forge and the PFC have, and uh, and Atletico and Calgary haven't. Uh, so I think that experience for both these clubs uh, is going to be very, very key in in the postseason for the men. Will hold them in good stead, I think. You know, it's interesting when you look at the top four. There's still, to me, it jumps out. You know, Forge, Calgary, Pacific. For whatever reason, I know they're in first place, but. Ottawa doesn't worry me as much as the other three are. I don't know if it, you know, maybe the way they've won this year, you know, they're not, they play much differently th than the other three as well, which is interesting with a more, more defensive style. I, I, have you, not that we're not sold on Ottawa. I'm certainly sold. I mean, they're for real, but do you really see them as kind of the class of the league right now? There, there's something missing for me. Uh, well, I think they're interesting in that you're right. Cause of the big three that over the last four years, uh, they're the gate crashers of this final four uh, sure. group, right? So it's interesting to right. view them in that in that way, just simply because 
of these four teams, which one hasn't belonged in the past, right? And it's Ottawa that stands out as the you That's know fair, as the yeah. gate crashers, as it were, and you know, and the outsiders coming in. So I think a lot of people, like observers like us, are probably thinking, yeah, they're the maybe the odd man out, even though they're likely to win the league, you know, and uh, and you know take the top seed, and and host, you know, and they got great crowds there, and they're certainly going to get a big one if they get to the championship game. Uh, uh, you know, that'll be a big uh, plus uh, for them. But yeah, I mean, I don't think any of the four are unbeatable. I could, you know, I, I you know, you're gonna hold this tournament, uh, this uh, a, a four team tournament, and it's, and you could rehold it again, the, the you know, next month, and you're gonna get a different result. <laughs> it's just, I can <laughs> yeah, see right. pluses and minuses for all four of these uh, final four teams, and uh, I can see any one of them taking it. And that's what you want as a neutral, for sure. And just for the betterment of the league with so much parity this season. Uh, Cleve, I, we've talked twice now. I, there's a good chance. I feel like we're going to talk a third time. because <laughs> Well, you know, everybody's with, sort with, of with, got this hunch that there's another Forge versus uh, 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 a PFC final in the offing, right? And uh, that's what these interesting, these final few, you know, would it be at Starlight? Or will it be at uh, Tim Hortons, right? And that's going to be decided right. over this week. Yeah. Uh, but I'm pretty sure this anybody's watching from Calgary or Ottawa, you know, thinking, no, 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 you know, you, uh, I know. Yeah, it's you know, watch out for our group. But know, we wouldn't you know. be su- but we wouldn't be surprised if we were speaking no. again, even if it's a semifinal exactly. matchup. Yeah, I mean, the, 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 the odds, be, uh, you know. All matchups are possible at this point, from what I've seen, you know, from the standings. Of course, I mean, yeah. it could, and, and of course, uh, Anthony changes this year. It's not a one-off; it's a uh, two-legged series. So that makes it more of a chess match in many, many ways, right? And you got time to actually yeah, yeah. sit down and analyze how this is going to work out over two games, rather than the crapshoot of one game, right? Uh, you know, anything can happen in one game. Right. Uh, but two well, games and no, a no away aggregate no, either, no. right? So they, they removed that away yeah, aggregate, yeah. so that yeah, makes things interesting too. Now, yeah, the rest of FIFA has pretty much eliminated it, right? So it'll be very interesting. Yeah. And I, I'm not sure how the playoffs actually work. I don't know who gets to choose who. You know, I guess the higher seed would choose uh, which game they'd want where, right? So, yeah. The the yeah, I think that the way they said it, if I know in Forge's case, if they finish as in first or second, they get the second leg at home. If they finish I think third most, or fourth, they yeah, get the if first you leg at home. So. The second leg yeah. at home, obviously, right? Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, so it should well, yeah, be interesting. I, I think that changes the whole dynamic of the the playoffs now because it's now you know the better team is is going to win the playoff series, uh, the semifinals, uh, and there'll be no doubt about it. Uh, a one-off, you know, I'm sure Cavalry yeah. last year is still stinging from that extra time loss on a really strange right. goal to PFC, you know, because they thought that was their yeah. year, right? And, you know, you know right. so, uh, and I'm pretty sure they had their eye on, you know, on, you know, on Tim Horton's field in, in you know, one way, even in extra time, I because they pretty much dominated that game. And, but, you know, one game, mm-hmm. anything goes, right? Yeah. And, of course, everybody yeah. remembers the goal by uh, uh, Dada Luke, right? Uh, very strange one, a mm-hmm. uh, hustle goal, and anything can happen on a one-off. In a, in a two-legged series, I think uh, nobody can say that the best team has an advance, right? So. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, and, and again, without the away goals. So it's just yeah. a straight-up better yeah. team between two, yeah. two matches. It'll yeah. be exciting. Cleve, thanks so much for doing this. I, I, I feel like we'll yeah. talk to you again, so I'll, I'll, I'll leave, leave it out there. Thanks, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, take Bye. care. All right, quite the tilt on deck here Wednesday night in Hamilton between Forge and Pacific, uh, 7 o'clock. Now, if you're interested in tickets for this match, this is the women in sports match. There will also be a Spark Summit. Forge FC, very proud of the work they're doing on the front foot of things in terms of as far as the CPL is concerned, hosting this Spark Summit for for women, for business women working in sport uh, panels. We've done features on this. If you want to go back and uh, catch our focus on Ford, we interviewed Jackie Dory with CBC Sports. Uh, she's going to be hosting this panel uh, that includes Andy Petrillo, uh, Deidre Dion, who's an Olympic medalist and sports executive, and Taylor McIntyre, who's a football coach at McMaster. So that happens Wednesday night at Tim Hortons Field, uh, taking place at the club level, the Spark Summit ahead of Forge and Pacific. Tickets to this match available, forgefc.ca. You're not going to want to miss this. How could you want to miss this? I'll be there. Hope to see you there. We'll talk to you soon. Forge 
Lounge FC is prepared, and now you are informed. This has been Match Day Preview with Anthony Urcioli on the Forge Audio Network. Subscribe on Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts.